How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the Team O'Neill YouTube channel. My name is Drew. Today we're going to be talking about lines and apexes and car placement within the road. Let's get to it. A traditional apex line is probably the one that most people are the most familiar with. Um, if you've ever done any driving fast on pavement, if you watch a lot of racing like Formula One, this is probably a line you're going to be very used to seeing. A traditional apex line is a pretty simple idea. It involves the car starting the turn out here on the outside of the road and turning in so that you're getting really, really tight to the inside of the road right at the apex of the corner. So the most prominent point of the corner is where you're the tightest to the inside. And then you're using the whole road on the exit to let the car track out. So that is a traditional apex line. And in theory, within the confines of this whiteboard, this is the fastest way to get through this corner, right? It's the straightest path through here. So in theory, you can carry the most speed. And that's why, you know, in a racing scenario, this is a line that a lot of people like to use. The problem with this line is you're using every available inch of the road, right? You're using everything you can in order to carry the most amount of speed, which is really, really good when you're driving on a racetrack and you know exactly what's coming up. But if you're in a rally, chances are you haven't seen the corner before. You have no idea what's coming up. So this idea of using every available inch of the road can get a little bit problematic if anything changes, which when you're driving in a rally, they do, right? Things change all the time. So you'll notice that this can get a little bit more problematic if all of a sudden there's a patch of ice in the road like this. If there's a patch of ice in the road, now this line, which in theory can help me carry a lot of speed, now if I hit this patch of ice, I'm going to get pushed off the road and I'm not going to finish the turn um, in time. And I'm going to end up actually off of the road and potentially damaging my vehicle and potentially putting an end to my event. All right, so what we're going to do now that we're back in the car is we're going to run through a traditional apex line, but in slow motion, just to really show you guys uh, where that car placement is and where we've left the, you know, kind of confines of the whiteboard. And now we're here in the real world. So you guys will get a little bit more of a feel of it. So as we talked about on the whiteboard, you want to get the car set up as wide as grip allows on a traditional apex line. Right, so I'm all the way out here, but I'm gonna clip the corner right at the center point, right? You know, it's, it's most prominent point of the corner is where I'm gonna get the tightest to the inside on a traditional apex line, which in this particular corner is kind of that big tree that sticks right out. So what I'm gonna do is start my turn here and start kind of working my way inside, right? That puts me about here. So now I'm at the most prominent point of the corner furthest to the inside. The problem with that is that because I'm so tight to the inside of the road, I can't really get the car to pivot aggressively so I have a nice straight exit. I don't have the room to do that because I'm so tight to the inside. So that really means that I'm gonna let the, have to let the car track out kind of all the way out here to the edge of the road. If this was a, a, a flat racetrack or you know I knew exactly what was coming up, um, that wouldn't really be the end of the world. The problem is that this corner is very, very off camber in the exit, right? The road slopes like this. All roads have crown, so the road is shaped like this, which means typically when you're exiting on the outside, you're in the back half of the crown here, which is off camber, which means gravity is trying to pull the car off the road. This corner really showcases how if you finish on the inside of the road, you're more in that on camber, and it's actually gonna help give you a little bit more grip on the exit and actually allow you to get on the gas earlier. Because here, I'm very limited on how early I can get in the gas because it's just gonna push me further and further off the road. I have to be very, very patient and very light and easy with my inputs in order to keep the car pointing where I wanna go and keeping it on the road, rubber side down. So, it's all very informative to drive slow, but Where's the fun in that? So what we're gonna do now is we'll run a traditional apex line at speed and kind of show you the limiting factor of it. Big old lift here, get it turned back in the gas. Braking early here. 
easing out some with a nice trail brake, unwind back in some throttle. So here I'm setting the car up nice and wide. I'm going to use a nice little trail brake in, but I'm going to tuck it in early here. And what that does is I have to be really patient getting in the gas. I'm all the way out here and that on that off camber just pulled the car sideways, right? That gravity was trying to pull me off the road. So I had to be really patient with my gas, get my counter steer in to keep the car pointed where I want to go. Then I could start accelerating, but I had to be really, really patient on that because of that off camber. So the next line that we want to talk about kind of on our little list up here is an early apex line. Our nickname for this here at Team O'Neill is the crash line. So as you can tell, it's probably not really one of our favorites. Um, with that being said, you know, it's always good to know what you're up against. So an early apex line is different from the traditional that we just talked about in the sense that instead of starting on the outside of the road, you're actually starting your turn with the car set up on the inside of the road. Now, one of the things you might remember if you've, if you've ever been here as a student or if you do any rally driving, you drive a lot in slippery surfaces, you know it's really, really important to start your turns nice and early, right? Both to account for delay of input, you know, stay ahead of things, you know, all those different reasons. The problem is if you're really tight to the inside, you can't start early because otherwise you're just gonna drive off the road in the inside. So that means you have to wait to start the turn until you get past the physical apex of the corner. So by the time I get here, now I can start turning and you're leaving all of your turning to the last possible minute. Which kind of like we talked about with the traditional apex line doesn't leave us a lot of room for error. It actually leaves us less margin for error than the traditional in a lot of ways. The other problem with this too is because you're making this turn starting here, by the time you get here, you've been braking for a long time, slowing down. You're not gonna have a lot of, not gonna have a lot of momentum exiting the corner. So the early apex line, you can be faster on the way in, which is why you might see it a little bit on TV, or if you've done any wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, you might be a little bit more familiar with it. And let's take this patch of ice right here that we talked about with the traditional. If I'm here and I'm leaving all my turning to the last possible minute, I leave myself potentially you know, subjected to trying to get all this turning done with not a lot of grip. So that's a huge problem with the early apex line, not least of which is visibility. I'm not really gonna be able to see this patch of ice until I get into the corner. Because if I add a little bit of scenery here, so let's say, you know, I add, you know, let's say there's a tree here, maybe there's a building or something like that. If there's things like this lining the inside of the road, you're not gonna be able to see through the corner. You have no idea what's coming up. So if you're on an early apex line and I'm coming around and I'm really, really tight to the inside, Part of the problem is once I get about here in the corner, I'm about halfway around, maybe a little bit less than that, right? I'm about here. I can't really see what happens after, right? You know, uh, if you're kind of looking at, you know, that, that bank, you know, kind of where the, um, the, the Portage on is right there, right? It's really, really hard to see around the corner because those are obstructing my view. And because I'm really tight to the inside, they're even more of an obstruction, more of an obstruction to my vision than they otherwise would be. And what that means is I don't really know what the next corner is like. If I've never seen this road before, I have no idea what the next corner is. I don't really know what the grip is like. So even this corner, you know, I go around this corner m countless times every week. Uh, I don't know what the grip is today. I haven't been around it yet. And I have no idea because I can't really see, you know. Uh, I don't know if there's an animal standing in the road. Uh, there might be a rock or something that got displaced that could damage my tire. I have no idea until I'm basically in the thick of it. So through the cabin corner, if I'm on the inside on an early apex line, I can't see around the corner and then I have to start this corner really, really late, which can make the next corner a little bit of a tricky affair, right? You can see I'm really, really wayward because I'm trying to get back set up for this corner. And that's a lot of work on that early apex line. All right, so you guys have probably picked up on the fact at this point that the traditional apex line and the early apex line uh, can oftentimes leave us in kind of precarious situations when we're driving around out here uh, at Team O'Neill. So that tends to lead us to really preferring the late apex line for you know uh, the sport of rally and the kind of driving that we do out here at the rally school. So the late apex line starts very similar to the traditional in the sense that you're starting out nice and wide but the difference is you have to sacrifice a little bit of speed, but you're gonna get the car rotated nice and early here. And where the car actually is gonna get tight to the inside of the road is here, so a little bit past the apex, hence a late apex line. That's where the name comes from. There's a lot of benefits to this. Let's talk about this patch of ice at first, right? So because I'm able to get the car straight here, I can glide over this patch of ice with my wheel straight. 
right? So I have a much better chance if there is change in grip, if I can have the car straighter earlier, a lot of times I can just kind of skate over any, um, any area that might not have as much grip. I'm typically better set up for it. Assuming that if I do hit this patch of ice, if it does push me out a little bit, if the car slides, by the time I get to some good grip, I'm only gonna be about here in the middle of the road. So the late apex line, it leaves me a really, really nice buffer zone. If there's a sudden change of grip, maybe there's an animal standing in the road or a rock I need to avoid or something like that, I have all of this room here to make adjustments, right? It's really easy to let this car track out to the outside. It's a lot harder to bring these two cars in to make adjustments. The other thing with the late apex line, is that if you look at all of these different lines here, the longest straightaway coming out of the corner would be with the light apex line. All the way back here, this car has its wheels straight the soonest. So this car is gonna be able to get on the gas nice and early and have a nice long straightaway. Versus both of these cars are still gonna to have to be keeping some weight in the nose and really kind of leaving some acceleration on the table until all the way out here. So although I'm a little bit slower on the way in, I can a lot of times be faster on the way out because I can get my wheel straighter nice and sooner. Really the, one of the biggest benefits of the late apex line is really that visibility. If I'm all the way out here, I'm gonna be able to see all the way through the corner, right? I know this patch of ice is here. I know what's going on over here. Uh, I might have a good idea of what, uh, I'll have a much better idea of what's coming up next as well if I'm out nice and wide because I'm able to see. Any of you guys who have been out to the rally school before or maybe done other driving schools or you've done performance driving, you know how important it is to look to where you want to go. If you can look ahead and have a plan of what's happening, that's huge. So that late apex line is really going to unlock that for you. Late apex line, I'm out nice and wide, but I'm going to get the car rotated earlier. And then I'm going to finish the turn here right up on the inside in that on camber and you can see how I was able to get in the gas so much earlier because I was in the on camber and I had a lot more grip to work with there. You're on an early apex line it's really really tough to see but here if I'm out kind of as wide as grip allows out here now I'm able to see through the corner and I'm able to use that to my advantage to find the grip and I'm much better set up for the shop corner. So now we have a corner that goes the opposite direction directly after it. This can kind of make things a little bit trickier. So your traditional apex line, and this is where we're gonna enlist the help of some magnetic cars here. So if I'm here on a traditional apex line, let's assume I make it through and I'm the fastest guy through this corner. That's good stuff. The problem is now I get here and I'm set up on an early apex line, right? I'm tight to the inside of the road and I haven't even started my turn yet, right? I can't start the turn yet because otherwise I'll go off on the inside. So that early apex line that I'm on now has all the drawbacks that we just talked about over here. So I can't start the turn early. Now by the time I actually start the turn, now I'm gonna be all the way out here with not a lot of momentum and all the way on the outside edge of the road. So although the traditional apex line, hey, maybe you can be faster through one corner on that, but it doesn't always set you up very good for the next corner. The early apex line, has a similar drawback, but even to a, a higher degree. Because on an early apex line, you're all the way over here, you're gonna try to get back to where you need to be, now you're kind of facing the wrong direction to set up for this corner. So now you go to start this corner, you start the turn, now the car starts to finally go where you wanna go, you potentially might not even stay on the road at this point, you might end up off the road. Because that line can multiply as you progressively get off of that line and get kind of more early apex and more early apex as the corners go on, you're gonna see that it's a lot harder to really stay on top of that. So that early apex line, you might survive one corner, maybe if you're lucky you'll survive two, usually by the third one, you're off the road and you're gonna need a toe strap. So the late apex line really has its supremacy here because in this corner, yes, I sacrificed a little bit of speed to get the car turned early here, but I have a nice long straightaway where I can plan my next corner, I have a nice long straightaway where I can see through the corner, I know where the grip is, I know where I wanna place the car, and I can just take my time, separate my inputs, be nice and clean, and run another late apex line on this corner here. So, although I sacrificed some speed all the way back here, it pays off, because here I have a nice long straightaway where I can be on the gas longer than these two cars, and also exiting this corner, I have another long straightaway versus your, your early apex and your traditional apex, both of them left me kind of off the road.
So like here, I'm coming into those S corners, I wanna keep it out wide. So here, I'm able to use that. Now I have a little straightaway before the next one. So I'm not quite as hosed in between there. And I'm able to carry so much more momentum on the way out because I had longer straightaways both between the corners and also exiting the full S turn section of that. So yeah, you can really see on that late apex line how much more momentum I was able to carry coming out of that section. Uh, you know, really the, the benefit there is I actually had a little bit of time in between those two corners because I was on that late apex line and could get the wheel straighter sooner. And I actually had a little bit of a moment in between those two corners where I could get in the gas and kind of pick up a little bit of speed. All right, so that's just kind of a once over the world for how we approach lines and apexes and car placement here at Team O'Neill. As I'm sure you can tell, this is really quite a rabbit hole. We could make a whole video series on car placement and lines and apexes once we start talking about decreasing radius and crests and you know all sorts of things like that. Um, this gets pretty complicated pretty quick. If you would like to learn more about it, probably one of the best things to do would be come to the rally school. You're gonna encounter all kinds of different terrains, a bunch of different corners, a bunch of different vehicle types, and we can really dive into the nitty gritty of how to really apply this stuff to your actual racing or just you know any kind of driving you wanna do, um, just getting a deeper knowledge of it. If you can't make it out to the rally school, just subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're gonna be cranking out all kinds of good content, educating you guys as much as we can on rally driving and car control and all of that fun stuff. So thanks for watching. I've been Drew and we'll see you next time.